Hello everyone, not a particularly thrilling topic today I'm afraid because today I'm going to be talking about tax rates and tax receipts. One of the key disputes in economics is over tax rates and whether rising them or lowering them produces higher or lower total tax receipts over time. On the left, the Keynesians typically believe that higher tax rates will result in more money based on the very simple equation that 30% of £100 will result in £30, which is bigger than £20 you'd get from 20% of the same number. On the face of it, of course, this makes total sense, but as ever, on the left, the analysis is static and fails to consider long-run consequences. Free marketeers typically argue that increased taxes will hurt business and therefore growth, thereby leading to diminishing returns over time. Better to stimulate growth, which will grow the pie, meaning more pie for everyone. If you cut taxes from 30% to 20%, you will grow the economy from 100 to 160, which will result in more tax revenues. In making this argument, champions of the free market generally lean on the ideas of the Laffer curve, named after the supply sider Arthur Laffer. Now, I don't want to go into the weeds too much here, but Laffer did not say that any tax cut will result in higher tax receipts whatsoever, because clearly if the tax rate is 0%, the government will receive 0%. By the same token, if the tax rate is 100%, there would be no incentive for anyone to work, so again the government receive zero dollars. However, if that number is below 100, there is now some incentive to work, and that incentive increases as the percentage income taken by the government decreases. More people would work taxed at 80% than at 90%, for example, and still more would work at 50%, 40%, 30%, and so on. So the Laffer curve is trying to find a magic number through this trade-off. It wants to maximize the incentives to work as much as possible while still making decent receipts for the government to spend on those social programs and whatnot. Things like the army, the police, education, health, etc. Now, as ever, the proof is in the empirical evidence, and to determine who is right, the supply siders or the Keynesians, I've spent longer than I care to admit putting together this spreadsheet. I have put 11 developed economies here with varying tax rates expressed as a percentage of GDP. This number simply takes the total tax receipts from any source and divides it by total GDP. That means the numbers you see here, 50% for Denmark, 48% for France, and so on, combine personal income taxes with corporate taxes and any other methods the government use, for example, duty tax or uh, tariffs and so on and so forth. Although this introduces some roughness, economists use this metric to allow for country-to-country -country comparisons. Now, in this table, I've taken GDP per capita data from 2015 because the data for that year is very complete. Again, this is a rough measure. It is the total gross domestic product divided by the total number of people to produce an average measure of wealth for country versus country comparisons. Next, using a method stolen from the Harvard economist Greg Mankiw, I have multiplied GDP per capita by the tax rate to arrive at a taxes per person number, as expressed in 2015 US dollars. Now one thing we can see immediately here is that the UK and the US have similar numbers for tax per person. But the US gets there with a tax rate of only 26%, whereas the UK needs a rate of 34% to get to the same number. This would bear out the free marketeers who argue that the USA's lower tax rate encourages more investment and so grows the economy more. Because the country is richer, it can afford lower taxes. But, you might say, agent, the USA is a much bigger country than the UK, so of course it is going to be richer. But not so fast, dear Padawan. We can see a near identical effect if we compare Ireland, which has one of the lowest tax rates in Europe at 30%, and Germany, which has a higher one of 45%, and France, which is higher again at 48%. 
Yet Ireland achieves a slightly higher tax per person number than either Germany or France. Would anyone like to suggest that Ireland is bigger than Germany or France? It is simply more efficient at generating wealth than either of them. Now, a central claim made by free marketeers is that the lower tax rate will lead to growth and therefore higher tax receipts over time. I have ordered the table by tax rate and would like to draw your attention to this column, which is the percentage change in total tax revenue from 2014 to 2015. As you can see, by far the highest growth in tax revenues was Ireland, and this is because in the region of Europe it has by far the lowest tax rates. So if you're Google, do you, do you establish your headquarters in Paris or do you establish it in Dublin? Interestingly, the country with the highest tax rate here, Denmark, received less money in tax receipts in 2015 than it did in 2014. And generally, you can see the numbers get bigger the lower down you go on this list. The one anomaly is Sweden, uh, but these numbers, of course, don't tell the full story. Those sneaky Swedes have been slashing their corporate tax rate significantly for decades now a fact which the likes of Owen Jones or Bernie Sanders will never mention to you. So the plus 11% you see in this table is one of the long run benefits of this earlier cut which encouraged investment and growth. Now, there are some other mitigating factors here, such as whether the country is or is not running a balanced budget. So I've included that info here for those interested. However, I want to focus on this last column in which we see the percentage change in per capita GDP from 2014 to 2015. Again, Ireland shows phenomenal growth with a 34% increase. Denmark, meanwhile, shows a 14% decrease. You'll notice that Sweden also shows a 14% decrease while showing a gain in tax receipts. How can this be? Well, that'll likely be the impact of the very high number of immigrants that Sweden saw that year. Total wealth may have stayed around roughly the same number. Maybe it went down slightly, I don't know. But the total number of people also increased and many of them came to the country unemployed. This is also likely why the UK posted a negative figure for that year. Uh, I know Germany had the highest uh, 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 immigration that year, but uh, Germany is a special case. It's a you know manufacturing juggernaut, so it kind of gets away with these things. Whereas if you have a look at Japan's lower number, that is because total GDP itself actually shrank. You'll note also that Japan has the worst budget deficit of any country here, which means it is spending more than it is making in taxes, which is another blow to the Keynesians who typically argue for deficit spending. All right, that'll do, pig. Till next time. And a very special thanks to Sir Percy Blakeney, the Crimson Sater, Time Stealer, Newey Nelson, Macadamia, Rosie Alpaca, Kuzga, Holy Spatula, Bruno Liette, Tragic Vision, Michael Burt, Ginger Bill, Blake Barrows, Charles Vincent, and Edward Darrah.